Lindsay in Chesapeake, Virginia, thank you for calling. What's going on? Hi, Bobby. Hi. I'm going to try not to cry. <laughs> um, my little man, who will be eight um, February 27th, is having a rough time at school being bullied. He is being picked on because he's so small, um, he's brainy, and whew, he, um, you know, wears some hand-me-down clothes, and so some of his jeans are a little shorter than maybe they should be, and I was just hoping that maybe you could give me some words of encouragement that I haven't tried yet. Okay, yeah, um, that kid sounds just like me, really, when you say that stuff, like, that was pretty much me. So here's what what my grandma tried to do to me. She tried to tell me, bullies pick on you because they feel insecure about themselves. But I didn't listen to that. You're a kid. You don't listen to that. All you do is you listen to what's happening around you every single day. But my grandma, and even now I see it. And if you're a kid and you're listening right now, it's probably not going to sink in when I say this, but I'm saying this. People that do mean things, they do mean things because they don't feel good about themselves, first of all. Probably not going to sink in right now, but when it does, it's going to hit you like a ton of bricks and you're going to get it. Like, that type of person is really sad with themselves. But that's not going to help him at 7. It may help him at 14. Mm-hmm. It's not going to help him at 7. When I was 7, 8, 9 years old, and let me tell you, I got the crap beat out of me. Because, again, I was one of the poorest kids in a poor town. And, um, you know, I was the head lice kid. I was the dirty kid. I got taken out of class. You know, stuff like that. Th- what got me through that was knowing that one day... And again, I'm very competitive, was knowing that one day everybody who picked on me was going to be like, man, I wish I wouldn't have picked on him because look what he ended up being. So I focused all of my energy on, as much as I could, on not letting that hold me down and hurt me. Not all, because I'm human. I was human even then. But what I focused it on was working hard and proving to everyone that they may not think I'm worth a lot now, but just wait. Now, is it the healthiest thing? Probably not. But that's what I did. That's how I focused all of that energy as a kid. It was, okay, I, I know what I'm good at. For me, it was learning. I enjoyed learning. So I'm going to go. I'm going to be the best at Quiz Bowl. I'm going to learn and make the best grades. And one day, all these kids that picked on me are going to look at me and go, man, I wish I wouldn't have picked on it. And then when I got older, I was going to be able to help kids that were getting picked on. Mm. And that, to me, was the whole circle. Yeah. And so that's what I would say to him is that he can take this at seven, eight years old and use it as motivation to find his spot in the world. And the kids that are the weirdest are the ones that end up being the best. Weird's awesome. Like weird, you spend your whole young life trying to fit in and you spend your whole adult life not trying to fit in, trying to be different. Hmm. And it's weird how that happens because we don't understand when we're young that that's really what we need to be is ourselves. And so if I were talking to him, I would say kids are going to pick on you because you're different. But because you're different, that makes you awesome. And if you don't want to agree with that right now, go ahead and be awesome And then when you get older, you help kids who are getting picked on like you are getting picked on. Make it about helping other kids. So That's perfect. It's just, I I don't know your your son, and I don't know his demeanor and what what he takes from from you or from anyone else, but that's what I would tell him, and that's how I I would tell him.